Hey family, thank you so much for sharing with us again here at Destiny Christian Center and Steve Allen Ministries. I'm always elated to be here on these wonderful winning Wednesday nights uh, to share the good news of Jesus with you. Now, let's go ahead and get the routine over with. I need you to like, I need you to share, and I need you to subscribe, like our pages, uh, share this live stream on your page so your family and friends can come in and join with us tonight in our Bible class. Um, one word from God can change your life forever. So you never know what's going to be said that's going to change someone's life. So share this live stream on your page. And then I need you to subscribe. Subscribe to the Destiny Christian Center Facebook page. Uh, subscribe to the Steve Allen Ministries Facebook page. And subscribe to the Destiny Christian Center YouTube channel. Now, uh, of course, you know, I want to see your emojis, your thumbs up, your smiling faces, um, your hearts. Uh, and then say hello to your brothers and sisters while they're here. And uh, let's see your comments all through this service on tonight. All right, let's do that. We're going to get ready to jump in this word. So, 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 so we are in a series of teaching and we're dealing with the subject of spiritual growth. We've been in this, uh, this teaching series for several months. We're probably going to be here for a minute. And I thank God that we are growing together spiritually. We are growing together spiritually. I want you to confess right there where you are. I'm growing up spiritually, growing up spiritually. Tonight, we're going to talk about the access of spiritual growth, the access of spiritual growth. And basically, our discussion is going to be about prayer. We're going to talk about prayer tonight. Now, let's just jump into this. Uh, prayer is that which causes the parts of our Christian life to relate properly to one another. Prayer is, and listen to this, the prior, primary means by which we relate to God. A basic definition of prayer is relational communication with God. Relational communication with God. And the key word is relational because prayer is a dialogue between two individuals who are intimately related to one another, Intimate, intimately related to one another. Now, prayer is not this, this ritual of words that's got to be said in the right order, or it's not this chore that we, we, we have to get, up, get out of the way. I guess I got to pray. <laughs> I guess I got to pray. Let me go and get this over with. No, 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 no. See, and, and folk often think of prayer as being a bunch of flower, flowery words or fancy words, can I say it like this? Um, and I, I'm going to tell you, and the reason why most people feel like that is because of what they hear in church and because they're not praying like people pray in church, they feel like, uh, you know, I don't, I'm guessing I don't know how to pray. No. No, 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 no. And I'll be honest with you. Sometimes, you know, I grew up in church and sometimes the prayers was just people reciting stuff. They weren't really praying. They were just reciting stuff because it, it was always the same. It was always the same. I, I mean, we as kids, I never get man. My uncle, uh, my uncle, we call him Uncle Buddy. Uh, uh, God rest his soul. You know, I, and we got to realize that the people, uh, the previous generations only knew what they were taught. Uh, but we were as kids, man, we used to sit in church. We would, we would quote his prayer verbatim. Our father, here it is once again. Here I am, your poor, weak, and humble servant. Here I am with my knees bent and body bowed. And I didn't understand that when I was a kid because it was standing straight up. Their knees weren't bent and their bodies weren't bowed. 
but they were just reciting. It was, re it, it was real. And see, what happens is when we, we, we sit in church and we hear uh, these type of prayers, and I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. Please, please understand. But I'm trying to say to you, you don't have to feel like you can't pray because you don't pray like a person you heard pray. You're praying with and you're talking to your father who you are in relationship with. You're talking to, he knows you. He knows you. You can talk to him. He knows you. You're in relationship with him. Amen. Now, then you, then you have some people that treat prayer like it's some kind of good luck charm when things get tough in their lives. And it's a shame to say that. And as we, we talk about, there's a lot of believers approach prayer this way, which explains why a lot of us are not growing in the things of God. And please understand, prayer is absolutely vital in our lives. Absolutely vital in our lives. And I will tell you this, there is nothing more that the devil dreads more than a praying believer. The devil dreads a praying believer. Now, in the Old Testament, God's people couldn't, couldn't go to God for themselves. Only the high priest uh, could draw near once a year, and everybody else had to draw back and wait to see if God would accept the high priest's sacrifices to cover their sins for another year. But Jesus has satisfied the demands of God so that we can go directly to God ourselves. We've got direct access to God. Hallelujah. Boy, that's good news. We have direct access. I don't have to go through anybody. I have direct, you have direct access to God. Yeah, now, I pray for people all the time. I pray for people all the time. And people always tell me to pray for them. I always, I'm always praying for people but I need to let you know something. I don't know if somebody made you feel like God would hear my prayers and not yours. <laughs> and yeah, we all ought to have somebody to agree with us, but you should never feel like you can't pray for yourself. You, look at me, you have direct access to God. You have direct access to God. Hallelujah. Um, I remember my, when my kids were, were smaller, um, I know sometimes, man, and, and I didn't know how, it kind of made me feel some kind of way when they wouldn't come directly to me, but they would talk to their mother to talk to me. I'm like, I'm right here. You have direct access. <laughs> so we have direct access to God. I want you to show, I want to show you this. Go to James chapter five uh, and verse number 16. Listen to what it says. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Listen to this. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me read this in the Amplified Bible. Amplified Bible says this, confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that ye may be healed and restored. The spiritual tone of mind and uh, to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes him tremendous, makes tremendous power available, uh, dynamic in its working. Now, this verse is, is very powerful uh, and it, it says so much. First of all, listen to this. And I want to clear something up. A lot of people don't pray because they don't feel righteous. They don't feel, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy. And Satan likes to keep us in that place where we don't feel like we're worthy to pray. And simply stated, listen to me. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you have been made righteous no matter what your past looks like. 
Oh my God, did you hear me? If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you have been made righteous no matter what your past looks like. As a matter of fact, I want you to say that right there where you are. I am righteous. Hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. I'm in right standing with God. That's why when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus said in, in John chapter 16, verse 23, he says, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. See, the power is in the name of Jesus. And we've been made righteous because of Jesus Christ. We've been made righteous because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Thank God for Jesus. Now, the next thing that John 5 and 16 tells us is that there is tremendous power available for the righteous man. There's power available for us. But hear this. Just because power is available doesn't mean that you, you, you have it. Because here's the, here's the trick of the devil in a nutshell. The devil wants to keep you feeling like you're not righteous or he wants you to feel like you're unworthy in order to keep you from the dynamic power that's available to you in prayer. Let me break it down for you. And I really want you to listen to this. The reason that you're not praying is because you don't feel worthy. The reason you feel unworthy is because of the stuff that you're doing. The reason you're doing the stuff that you're doing is because you don't have the power within yourself to stop doing what you're doing. And the reason that you don't have the power within yourself or the reason that you don't have the power is because you're not praying. See, it all goes in the full circle. I'm going to say that again. The reason you're not praying is because you don't feel worthy. The reason you feel unworthy is because of the stuff that you're doing. And the reason you're doing the stuff that you're doing is because you don't have the power within yourself to stop doing what you're doing. And the reason that you don't have the power is because you're not praying. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. If you're going to be people uh, uh, that, that grow spiritually, you got to have a prayer life. A prayer life is a necessity. See, if you're not praying, God's not moving. If you're not praying, God's not moving. Even in, in, in our church, we, 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 we believe in having a, a spirit of excellence on everything that we do. Our buildings, everything we wanted in order. Uh, thank God for I mean, especially after the, the, the storm and we put our buildings back, we made sure that we put everything back with the spirit of excellence. But without prayer, none of that will succeed. The, the kingdom of a man advances on fleshly deeds, but the kingdom of God advances on its knees. Let me, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Go to Isaiah. Just talking about the, the church building. Go to Isaiah 56 and verse number seven. <clears throat> Isaiah 56 and verse number seven. 56 and seven. Listen to this. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Again, we, we've got the state of the art equipment in our buildings now. We've got all the lights and we've got screens on the walls and we I mean it's just absolutely beautiful but none of that matters if that house is not a house of prayer God says 
that my house should be a house of prayer. Not just the house on 612 Main Street, but even the house that you reside in ought to be a house of prayer. You got all kinds of problems going on in your house, in your family, in your marriage, with your children? Is your house a house of prayer? There's power in prayer. You've tried everything else, but have you prayed? Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you what happens with us a lot. We know what we need to do, but knowing what we need to do and doing what we need to do are two different things. A lot of times we know what to do, but we fail to do what we know. Have you prayed? I know it sounds simple, but there's a lot of times we get away from the basics and we're trying to figure out why things are not working. You tr you're so busy trying to get to something else and grow in some other area, but you're doing the basics. Are you praying? Let me tell you this, and you can study this out. Jesus Christ spent a lot of time praying. A lot of time, a lot of time praying. Read through the scriptures. He was always praying. And if Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, God's only begotten son, felt the need to pray, how do you expect to make it without prayer? How are we going to make it without prayer. I read somewhere and it was sad. I read somewhere that the average Christian, if they pray at all, they only pray two minutes a day. I want, I want you to think about that for a second. Two minutes a day. Out of 24 hours, two minutes a day. I can break it down even further than that. Out of 1,440 minutes, we only pray at we only pray two minutes, if that. Paul says in First Thessalonians five and seventeen, he says, "Pray without ceasing." If we're gonna see prayer work in our lives, we're gonna have to pray even when we don't feel like it. And I'll be the first to tell you that real prayer is work, and it's work because. You're in a war. You're in a spiritual war. That's why when it's time to pray, it's hard sometimes for us to focus. Satan tries to make you feel awkward about praying, trying to make you feel frustrated and powerless about praying. So what happens with us is we give up real easy. But if you're going to, you're going to receive and experience the power, you're going to have to be diligent. You have to be diligent in prayer. Let me show you this. Go to Matthew 26 and 41. Hallelujah. I think I need to spend a couple of, day, uh, a couple of lessons on this. Because this, this is so important. Matthew 26 and, and 41. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Satan will always attempt to distract you when it's time to pray. You don't get sleepy. You can sit up and watch, you can watch television all night. I mean, without breaking. You wanna, you're watching something, you don't even wanna pause it because you don't wanna, you, 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 you don't wanna, and then if you have to take a break from it, you, you will pause it so you don't miss anything. I mean, you, you're diligent in watching certain shows at night. Boy, but don't talk about when it's time to pray or read that word. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh my God. You, how many of y'all, come on, let's just be real about it. I've asked this question over and over again. How many of you ever fallen asleep in the middle of prayer? Huh? You fallen asleep? I, I've done it over and over again. Prayer is work. Satan does not want 
us to pray. And I'll tell you this, the best method to keep us from praying that Satan uses is to keep us too busy to get around to praying. Yeah, keeps us too busy. You, you, you schedule your day out in the morning. I want you to think about this. You have the, the alarm clock to wake you up because you know how much time it's going to take for you to get dressed. You know how much time it's going to take av- on the average for you to get in your car and get to your office. You schedule everything out. But why isn't prayer in the schedule? How do you get up in the morning and just the fact that you woke up is enough reason to tell God thank you? And then you you mean to tell me you're gonna you're gonna get in that car and drive without praying? You mean to tell me you're gonna go through your day? You're gonna start a day and don't pray? You you you're that you're that bad, you're that big and bad that you don't need God? You can actually go through the day without him? Without acknowledging him? Just the fact that you woke up was first thing you should have said was thank you should have told God thank you for for keeping you. There were mean men and mean women up and down the streets of your city. God protected you. We don't think about that. Everything's on the schedule, but prayer. Prayer needs to be a part of the schedule. Turn the turn the alarm clock on. Let it go off earlier than normal, so you can get up and spend time with God. See, let me tell you this: the devil knows that if you ever get to the point where you just bombard heaven in prayer. There's nothing he can do with you. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The more intimate your relationship with God is, the easier the work of prayer becomes. See, and that's still work now, but it's enjoyable work because you're communicating with somebody you love. Um, I, can, I can equate this to, to marriage. In the, in the early days of marriage or in the, the courtship, are part of the relationship. A couple wants to be together and communicate all of the time. All of the time. When when Marilyn and I was dating and in the beginning of our marriage, oh my God, we spent so much time on the phone. Man, I would call that girl up on a job all of the time. She would be busy. I got to go. I got to go. And I'm just, I just call to say, I love you. <laughs> hey, boy, I got to go. I got to go. These, these people. I just call to say how much I care. <laughs> all the time. On the phone. All the time. Want to communicate all the time. And, 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 and the same thing happens with new believers. Oftentimes, it's the same way in our relationship with God. Oh, man, when we first got saved, we were, we were fervent in prayer. We were, we were excited about prayer. Oh, we got up in the morning, we were talking to God. We wouldn't go to bed without talking to God. But the challenge in marriage and the challenge in prayer are similar. We've got to maintain a level of intimacy and the desire to communicate. It's got to be intentional. Most of the marital problems today is because of a lack of communication. We become so familiar with one another that we don't talk anymore. And then we expect each other to be mind readers. And what happens then is you end up with crying women and pouting men because there's no communication. Did you hear what I just said? I said pouting men because there's no communication. And it's the same way in our prayer lives. You know, we, we, we may toss a few words up to God every now and then, if we do it all, but we've got to understand that relationship requires fellowship. Oh my God. 
Relationship requires fellowship. And when I say fellowship, I'm talking about time. Relationship requires time. And I'll tell you something else. Fellowship will strengthen any relationship. My relationship uh, with God requires fellowship with God. And it's awesome because when I fellowship with God, and I want you to listen to this, and I want you to really get a picture of this. When I fellowship with God, it takes me to a higher place. See, prayer takes us to another level in life. It's a, it's another realm. It's like, you ever been on an airplane and looking out the window from the airplane? When you look out the window from an airplane, everything looks peaceful. And it doesn't matter how chaotic things are actually, but, but from that level, from that perspective, everything looks great. And that's what prayer does for us. Prayer takes us to another level. Oh my God. You see, our problem is we've been on the ground too long. We ain't praying. So we, we're down on this low level. We, we've, we've lost divine perspective. And when that happens, we began to operate according to the wisdom from below rather than the wisdom from above. I, I prove it to you now. And I'm almost out of here. I'm almost out of here. Let me, let me show you this. James 3 and 17. We're going to deal with this a couple of weeks. I, I feel like this is necessary. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. The only way you can find the wisdom from above is by communicating with heaven. You see, when you pray, you get heaven involved in your business. <laughs> and when heaven gets involved in your business, Things have to change. Did you hear what I just said? When heaven gets involved in your business, things have to change. There was this incident where um, Paul and Silas had been arrested for preaching, preaching Jesus. And, uh, the Bible talks about how they began to pray and sing praises unto God. They began to pray and sing praises unto God. They were in a bad place, but they began to pray. And look at look at what Acts. 16 and 25, I'm closing with this. Acts 16 and 25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. When people pray, something's got to shake. Hallelujah to God. See, we don't see places shaking today because we stopped talking to God. It's time to pray. If we're going to grow spiritually, we got to pray. Years ago in the nineties, MC Hammer had a song out that says, we've got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to pray just to make it today. We've got to pray. And MC Steve wants to say the same thing. We got to pray. We got to pray. We got to pray just to make it today. Let's pray. God, we love you. We honor you and we praise you. Thank you for your word. No, we're not just hearers, but we are doers of your word. We take your word tonight and we apply it to our lives. Thank you for the reminder tonight, God, so many people that are watching me tonight 
have gotten away from the basics, gotten away from talking. We God, we we get up sometimes. We don't even tell you thank you. God, we go through our day. We don't even recognize your presence. And then we go to bed at night. We don't say anything to you. And for that, we ask you now to forgive us. We know that we're instructed in the word to pray without ceasing. And God, we, we fail to obey your word. And we read in your word where it says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Thank you for Jesus. And because of Jesus, we've been made righteous. So we have the right to pray and we have the right to see things avail to much in our lives. But we've gotten away from those things that are necessary. I come against every attack of the devil that would distract us from what's necessary for our spiritual growth. Thank you now. Bless your people tonight. Thank you now, God, that we're moving now to another place in our prayer lives. We declare now that our houses will be houses of prayer. Not just the church house, but God, we realize that we are the church. And wherever we are, the church is there. And even in the places we reside, we thank you now that our houses will become houses of prayer. In so much that uh, when people cross the seals of our doors, they will feel your presence in our homes. Hallelujah to your name. And we realize, God, that when our houses become houses of prayer, the devil can't stay there. God, we thank you right now that as our houses become houses of prayer, our families will, will get back together. I thank you now, God, that when our houses become houses of prayer, that our marriages will be restored. I thank you right now, God, when our houses become houses of prayer, our homes will be homes of love and joy and peace and understanding. We have the power to change it. But we've been living beneath our privileges. Today, we take authority over every spirit that's not like you, that comes against us in our homes and in our lives. Thank you right now, God, for power and authority that you've given us in the name of Jesus. Now I pray for every person that's watching. I claim everybody for your kingdom tonight, hallelujah. I pray for those that have been at a distance from you. I thank you for them coming back to you tonight. I pray for those that you've spoken to and you've said to them, that Destiny Christian Center is a place that they are to be planted. They're going to grow and be fruitful. I pray now that they will be obedient to your will for their lives. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Ooh, boy, I'm telling you now, I feel God's presence. That yoke-breaking, yoke-destroying, burden-lifting anointing is present in this place tonight. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, let me extend this invitation to you. If you're watching me tonight, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. And you can be saved tonight. Don't you let the devil keep you in that place in your life. Don't you, don't you let him keep you in that place where you feel like you got to wait until you give, get yourself right to come to God. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. Come to God just like you are. I say this all the time. He'll meet you right there where you are. But he loves you too much to leave you in that condition. He'll change your life if you give it to him. Now, there's some information right there on the screen. I want you to follow those directions. If you're going to make Jesus Lord of your life tonight, follow those directions. We're going to have somebody to get back in contact with you. But tonight is your night. Now, you may be watching me and you're saying, well, Pastor, at some point in my life, I gave my life to the Lord, but I'm not where I should be as it relates to my walk with God. I need to recommit my life to the Lord. Listen, that same information can be followed for you. And uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, we'll have somebody to, to reach out to you. Would absolutely love to pray with you and share some scripture with you. Get you into a stable place. 
And then maybe there's another person or some other people that the Lord's been directing about being a part of the Destiny Christian Center family. If that's God's will for your life, this invitation is for you. You can follow those same directions and we'll have somebody to contact you as well. We'd love to have you to be a part of our family. I'm so grateful to God uh, for all the people that's becoming a part of the Destiny Christian Center family as of late. I'm telling you, it's been absolutely amazing to see the ministry growing. And not just the ministry growing in numbers, but to see people growing, like we're talking about, spiritually growing. Um, so follow those directions. If you fit anywhere in any of those categories, and we're gonna make, make sure somebody contacts you. Oh my God, thank God for tonight. Let's prepare now to worship and giving. We are a ministry that believes the word of God. We practice God's word. We're blessed because of our obedience to the word. The Bible says, bring ye all the tithe and offering into the storehouse. God says, prove me. See, will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. You know what he says? I will curse the devourer for your sake. Think about that. Those things that come to eat up your goods, God says, I will stand against them. I want to encourage you tonight to be a true, committed, consistent tither. Consistent. Now, the devil fights us in this area, too. We, you know, uh, there are some people, you watching me right now, you used to be tithers, and the enemy really fights you on this. I had somebody to tell me this past week, Pastor, thank you so much for teaching me. I had gotten away from, from tithing, but I can't afford not to tithe, Pastor. I want to encourage you. We believe in God to have 100% participation in tithing and in offering in this ministry. All of us should be tithers, and all of us should be givers. So let's do that tonight. Let's do that. Look, I need y'all to help me with something. Last week, um, a week ago today, uh, we were hit with a really bad storm here and um, our back area of the church flooded. Uh, so we had to pull up all the floors and we've got some repairs we have to do. We're not going to uh, go to an insurance company. Let me tell you something uh, here, and you may be watching me from other places, but here in Louisiana, uh, we have so many storms that happen it's hard, it's gotten to the place where it's hard to get insurance. And when you do have insurance, we got hit by a storm, uh, Ida, a couple of years ago. And after Ida, it was so hard for us to even get insurance. And then when we got insurance, it was three times the price of what we were paying before. But we have to pay it because we have to have insurance. But with a claim like this, with the, the damage that happened uh, last week, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to file a claim because I don't want to risk losing our insurance. We'll, we'll hold on to insurance uh, for major things. And we're praying to God that we don't have any major storms this year. Uh, but with this, we're going to just pay for it. And if you'd like to help with that effort, uh, you can put that in your your offering tonight uh, and just mark off what it's for. You can just put repairs in the memo section. Uh, we're gonna get that done. We're gonna pay for that. We're gonna get that done. I don't even have a total on what it's gonna cost you. And I'm waiting uh, for the contractors to give me some kind of numbers, but we're gonna knock that out. If you'd like to be a part of that, really would appreciate your help. All right, come on, let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for this time of giving. We, uh, we, we, take your word and we practice it tonight. You told us to bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse. You told us to prove you. You said you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings upon our lives that we wouldn't have room enough to receive it. Thank you for that, God. Your word also says you can't lie. I am a witness that you'll do exactly what you said you'll do. And I thank you tonight for the people of God that are obeying your word. Thank you right now. We give the tithe. We sow seed in the offerings. And we thank you now for increase in every aspect of our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Say this with me. Say, I'm a true tither and giver. And I am blessed because of it. The windows of heaven are open for me. The blessings of God are poured out upon my life. Will you confess this? I have huge money 
Right now, it's pressed down, it's shaken together, and it's running over. We don't confess this to hoard over money, but we're believing God to bless us so much that we can be a blessing to the kingdom and we can be a blessing to people. Will you say this? I am out of debt. All of my needs are met with a surplus. Say this with me, debt-free destiny dome. We're gonna confess over the dome. Debt-free destiny dome. Seating over 3,000 people. Filled with over 3,000 people. I need somebody right there to say, it's up, hallelujah. I love y'all so much. Man, I enjoyed this service tonight. I'm gonna invite you to share with us Sunday morning uh, for two powerful services. Uh, one service at 8 a.m., uh, which will be live stream as well. And I thank God for all of our people that's watching from all over the country. Uh, but those of you that are here locally, I, of course, thank God for you watching on live stream. But why don't you come in, come to the house, come to the house, uh, 612 Main Street in Laplace, Louisiana, Destiny Christian Center, one service at 8 a.m. and another service at 10 a.m. If you've never had an in-person live Destiny experience, I, I just want to invite you to just to come and experience it. Your life will never, ever be the same. So I want to see you Sunday, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Destiny Christian Center, 612 Main Street in Laplace, Louisiana. I love y'all so, so, so much. And I want to talk to you real soon. Y'all have a good night. Peace.